You are about to listen to episode 30 of Musically Meditated. A special thanks to Justin Juice Wallace, Nick Gloom, Michael Massengill, Alex, who I don't think he ever gave his last name. Also this episode, a very special thanks to Area Sheet Metal. They sponsored the show this week, and we are grateful. Thanks, guys. If you have any questions about Area Sheet Metal, you can go to www areasheetmetal.com. You can also call the offices at 219-942-7700. Their address is in Hobart, Indiana at 409 South Shelby Street, Hobart, Indiana 46342. Thanks, guys. Last piece of housekeeping. If you are listening, please, if you have not already done so, subscribe to the YouTube channel for Musically Meditated. Please subscribe to the iTunes channel of Musically Meditated. If you want to see what other shows the Green Door Network is doing, you could look up Green Door Network on iTunes and also subscribe to that and listen to shows like Juice Pro Wrestling, Pricks on Flicks, Would You Rather Podcast, Stephanie's Train Travels, and a bunch of other ones that are coming. You could also contact Joe at musicallymeditated at gmail.com. Remember to join the Facebook page, uh, the Instagram page. Just interact with us. Let Joe know what you're thinking, and uh, let's grow this thing. It's been awesome so far, and let's just let's just keep it going. Thank you very much to everybody who has supported us. Joe and I have a hell of a time doing it, and it's a uh, it's pretty amazing journey to watch this thing grow. Thank you, and yeah, enjoy episode 30. Tool, Lateralis, birthday episode. <laughs> Musically meditated. Musically meditated. Musically meditated. All right, welcome to Musically Meditated. Uh, real quick, please share Musically Meditated with all your friends and family and your enemies. This is a special birthday episode for the album by Tool, Lateralis, that was released May 15th, 2001. And that date is actually really important, isn't it, Sretton? Isn't, isn't May 15th kind of important? It's kind of important. Why is that? I don't know. All these like amazing, genius-style, super charming, super good-looking humans usually are born on that day. It's some kind of like cosmic... Uh, Taurus? It's like a Taurus thing, isn't it? It's just super special. It's super special. I don't, have, I don't have good words. It is. But why is that? Whose birthday? Whose birthday is on May 15th? I don't know. Whose birthday is it, Joe? You tell me. You tell me. Justin Wallace, you tell us. Whose birthday is it? Who? Nick Gloom, tell us. <laughs> Whose birthday is it? Happy birthday, Lateralis. Happy birthday, Joe Riley. Thank you. Happy birthday, Srenton. Oh, man, man, that was nice. And going into that, we have guests tonight. We have Nick Gloom here with us. He's been on before. He was here episode 19. We have Justin Wallace. He has his own podcast, Juice Pro Wrestling. Check it out. Subscriber, And we also have Alex with us, my homie Alex. Um, He's going to jump on here in a little bit. But what we're going to get into is Tool Lateralis, and it's crazy because it's 17 years old fucking old man it's old yeah it's really old and i want to get into that right away is like where we were at in our lives high Se- school fresh 17 out of high years school, ago you know? yeah it was like that summer for transitioning for, yeah that yeah. transitional summer for wallace and i like we just got done with high school gonna start college and uh <laughs> i i really remember <laughs> oh, i really remember that like it was at the very end of high school but when that baseline came out from schism oh yeah yeah i mean everybody knows that baseline but that baseline <laughs> was huge wasn't it yeah it was great i learned how to play that you know, do, immediately. Do, do you Almost still, immediately. Do you still know how to play? It? I still tinker with it, dude. It's a great warm up. Nick, do you know fun. how to play it? Yeah, we should have a bass op. The we three should. of us should. We should have brought all of our. That was all always hard. a hard one for me to like try I, the little the little flick. Wallace, give us a little impress. Like, do it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. <laughs> that, that was a little a little dirty. He shoots. He scores. And another thing too, Area Sheet Metal is uh, sponsoring us tonight. So thank you, Area Sheet. Shout Metal. out to Area Sheet Metal. We really appreciate quality that. quality HVAC work. It, quality, quality 10 knockers, quality union shop. And, you know, it goes together. It goes together yeah. with Tool because Tool always had that, like, industrial sure. vibe. Yeah, yeah you right? use tools in HVAC, you know. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. you listen to Tool while you use those tools. You're a tool. I am. <laughs> but, yeah, so it's a happy birthday episode. Um, as far as the stories go, Wallace, tell me where you were at in, in, in that May of 2001. What was going on? Oh, man. And, and getting to some stories, too, like, I think we all – went to that particular tour i didn't i i've never unfortunately but what was your them. story tried. with trying to go to that tour well no that tour oh, what the fuck was it i know i got shysted out of that one too 
I, maybe I just didn't have the money. I was young or something, you know, I don't know. Um, but I remember that particular time, like you said, like going that summer of like 2001. And that was like that album that came out. I think Weezer had put out the Green album. Um, 311 did that from chaos came out. Deftones white pony was really big. Like the summer before. Right. Remember? Right. And like, it was more of a wintry album anyway. It was kind of, it's like a Deftone, good both. Yeah, yeah. But this one is a really good spring album. Cause Tool yeah. always reminds me of may. Maybe it it's reminds because me of the album. summer being a irresponsible, like kid who just graduated high school. Like you said, going into college and just like, what are you going to do every day? Like, nah, you know, I'm going to take it easy for a month or two and listen to, tool and uh extracurricular activities you know micro dots yeah a lot yeah. a lot of partying and yeah. now i'm just all oh, man it just takes me back to that time in my life you know right on, right on. how about you nick where were you at I'm a little bit younger than you guys oh oh man no, i was six, dating us i was 16 yeah, don't date us. damn <laughs> yeah i don't know i remember like listening to the radio just to hear that song constantly till i finally had the 16 bucks to go pick up the record i don't think i it was later i don't think i got that summer or that uh record till the end Remember, of summer wasn't there some kind of uh special packaging for that album yeah there was um we'll, we'll get into this too let's do it right now what's the artist's name again alex quick? gray alex gray so when you bought the album remember it was clear the cd yeah that's and then it, it looked like one of those old science Remember, like back in the day, it's like would, an anatomy, an anatomy yeah, thing. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. But it had like a weird, like a weird trippy vibe to it too, didn't it? Yeah. Each page yeah. was like translucent, but yeah, you they peel were... it back and get deeper and deeper yeah. into the and it, like the old medical books, like right, like an old like Grey's in Anatomy. And at the very the frogs, at the very last page is just uh, I think it was just like the skeleton with the brain. Yeah, it was like the whole human nervous system, like system. Yeah, right, sure. The the spot yeah, the spine. The, it was the spine, whole spiral the thing body. was a huge thing. There was also a thing too when they the first like so many pressings of that, uh there was a lot of stuff that was spelled wrong on it. Mm. And I remember one of my friends had one of the like, you know, five thousand copies that was spelled wrong. It was spelled lateralis with an I instead of U at the end. Does Tom Lounge and uh name? shout out to Tom Tom shout out to Tom Lounges yeah. in, in, in the record store, right? Yeah. Some yeah, of the track names were wrong. It was wild, man. I didn't get one of those, but I remember that was a big deal too. Like, right? I, I remember I got it when it first it. came out. Um, yeah, the they, girl yeah. I was dating, her mom got it for me because I was so pumped up. Mm -hmm. And then it was my birthday, and it came out, and they got that for me, like the whole family. Yeah, and that was cool. Like looking back, like that was a really good time in my life. Alex Lyle, where where were you at, man, when this came out? I the first time I heard excuse me on the radio. Yeah, get close to the mic. Get please. right in there. Yeah, uh, get close. Your first micro schism. I think I was being driven somewhere with my mom listening to the <laughs> fucking radio, man. I was no, going same, 100%. Yeah. Same. I mean, I was I was going into high school. I was That was like middle year, school for yeah, you, right? Eighth grade. Okay. Tenderoni over here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Very, But I mean, it was do you remember Schism too when the baseline came oh, out? For sure. And was I everybody the first time I heard it on the radio? Yeah, I was I was going down uh, Grand Boulevard oh. towards 30. See, look at that. That's like when Kennedy got shot. People, yeah. <laughs> Bullet. people know where they were at the first time they heard this album. That's why it's it's such a big deal, and that's yeah. why we have so many people here to talk about it. I mean, seriously, that was it's a great album. It's my favorite Tool album. I'll put it oh, out there. Sure. That was up for until sure. uh, up right. until this gap in album. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> releasing what comes that up. was the longest period they had between album because like Enema felt like it was forever. And then that, you know, I was like, when the hell is Tool going to put an album out, you know? Yeah, I think they were all the, after, after uh, Inema, they were all kind of like five, six years gaps. There was the same amount of time between Lateralis and 10,000 Days, I believe. Yeah, yeah, something was around there? there. And now they, it's like they've doubled that. Yeah, they've yeah. They've doubled that gap now, but. 2006. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was 06. So well, five great years, packaging yeah. as well. Yeah, but, but like Lateralis, packages. the whole packaging, the artwork, that was the first time I ever saw Alex Gray. You know, it had this very trippy, trippy vibe to it. And, um, you know, what separates the good albums from the from the weak ones is it's, it's very good from start to finish. I know, like, the last three tracks are kind of tool. Watch your mouth. Watch they get a little artsy it, it, on it. It's getting Watch a little artsy, fartsy. Look, at, look Nick, Nick Loom don't like that. But, yeah, it's getting a little artsy, <laughs> fartsy. But I love Tool. I love yeah. Tool. Um, let's get into, Nick, when you saw him for this tour. Because I know myself, you, and Alex, we all went to this tour. Yeah, it was, it was, where was it at? Because we were talking about this earlier. I wish I remember the venue. I was somewhere in Wisconsin. My oh, you in saw him? In okay, let's hear I about saw that. Saw him in Wisconsin. Yeah. Okay. It was pretty rad. Uh, if I could, if I could give like a precursor, if I could go back a little bit. Uh, my uncle, he's like six years older than me, and he's he was always a huge influence 
I mean, as a kid, you know, figuring out music and stuff. He bought me Undertow when I was like nine years old, and I was like scared of it. I, it was hard to listen to. You know, it had that weird uh, red like rib rib cage album cover. I, I I packed that album away for a few years, but that was his like. All right, man, it's time you, you get into Tool. And I only started, I listened to Undertow like a year before Lateralis came out. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, this is going somewhere. Anyway, he drug me up to Wisconsin and we got these like crazy, incredible, like handicap seats. We were right on the side of the stage. And it just, I mean, if you've never seen Tool, it's it's a rock show, but it's it's so much more than that. It's for it's, people who take psychedelics. And like to get psychedelic and furry. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe I mean, that come would enhance on. Yeah, it, no. sure. But it's, sure. it's just everything about it is like... Ravers have ecstasy. We have tool. Sure. <laughs> Metalheads have tool. But uh, Wallace, what was your story, though? I know you didn't get to... You, you've never, you never got to see him, right? No, I've seen a perfect circle. But you went yeah. to try to get tickets for this show. No, it was okay. actually 10,000 days. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, my bad, my bad. Yeah, Sorry, yeah but I thought I thought there was a story. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll get into my story. All right, uh, go to yours. And Alex, Alex <laughs> confirmed this earlier. <laughs> he confirmed it earlier. It was at the United Center. Now we didn't. I don't remember who opened. But I'm he trying said to look was, that up. Right he now. said it was Tomahawk. I believe him. I think that's true. Okay, I think that's true. I, I remember a bunch of hairy guys in like hockey jerseys just. <laughs> I or, didn't care about it. Or was it, it wasn't Mashuga? Dude, wasn't here's tool. here's the list of bands they toured with from 2001 to 2002. There's so, Cortisone, nope. Phantomus, Cosmic Psychos, King Crimson, The Melvins, Mashuga, Pablo, Tomahawk, and Tricky. See, I thought it was Mashuga till you said Tomahawk. Now I think no, it's I Tomahawk. Think now he's saying well, that. Well, it could have been. Well, see, yeah, it was different so dates. It was different dates. Right. Right. They could have split. They could have split the tour. I'm now. I don't know. I was with you, man. But now I don't know because I thought it was Mashuga originally. Yeah, could have been different. Could have been different. Do you remember the date? No, man. I know it was. <laughs> That's a Tool fan. It, remember the date? No, but it was. Well, here's my story. <laughs> Wait a minute. I think I saw him in like September because uh, 9/11 was 2001, right? And I feel like it was right in that time period. It was. It was. Like yeah. I think. I remember fucking Ed McCaffrey getting his leg broken. Get real close to the mic. Mike won't pick any of this up. Yeah. Get real I close. I remember Ed McCaffrey's leg getting broken. Closer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, real close. About it. Ed McCaffrey broke his leg on 9-11. No, the day before. Oh. Okay. Really? You remember that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, here, all, all, I, all I really remember about that is I went with uh, a couple of friends. I know I went with uh, my friend Mike Paris, rest in peace. Ricky Potney, oh, rest dude. in peace. Uh, and I believe Jimmy Martinez was, was with us. Shout out to the Cube. To the Cube, right? Right. Wow. Yeah. But uh, I don't remember a lot of details. Uh, we all we all tuned in and dropped out. Uh, I don't know how you want to take that, but it is we get what it, it is. We get it. We get it. You can connect Tool the you, you can connect the micro dots, you know, back then. But uh, it was a great time. It was a great show. It was super loud, and it was the United Center. I think it was the United Center. Damn! Look at Stratton. He's got it. He's got the audio figured out. Alex is in. He's live. Alex, where were you sitting though? For that with Stratton. I had terrible seats. <laughs> <laughs> sitting I was with like, uh, facing the Put that mic by your mouth, Holmes. Thank you. Uh, facing the stage, I was probably like upper deck, left corner. It was terrible seats. I don't remember like song list. I don't, you know, set list, nothing. The the thing that I remember most about ago. that show was they uh, they were playing something, and Adam Jones was just playing these four notes over and over again. And one by one, you know, the rest of the band walked out the stage, and it was just kind of him, like in an intermissionary sort of situation where he was just playing these four notes over and over again. I don't know if he did this at the United Center. If you guys remember this, and then the weird things from the schism video it was like a it was like a chick and a dude came out painted like those creatures and they were like walking <laughs> yeah. like backwards crab and hung Me upside down. down and like but in and adam jones just looked like a superhero up there he played the same four notes for fucking 20 minutes and Dude. i was just like <gasps> danny carey always had like a crazy um their, their whole stage setup was different for tool like he would be more up towards the front to the right with the drums instead of in the back and then like he would always wear he would always wear uh, like basketball jerseys what and like Maynard shorts on a platform and shit. A yeah, lot he always too. dressed up in a like, Lakers uniform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or Kansas City. He wears Kansas City. Oh, and you would never know what you know Maynard was going to do. Is he going to wear like a cowboy hat or a, wig, you know, a bra? A bra. Like paint maybe. his body like a constellation yeah. or something. 
you chicken know. outfit. All right, chicken outfit. But uh, yeah, man, those are some cool stories. I'm feeling it. Feeling. It. I, I wish I could remember more, but it's been such well, a long time ago. Can, can hey, we, we got can, other stories of you know. I mean, no, it, I just want to. Fo- I just want to focus on lateralis. Other stories of Maynard in his vineyards. All right, let's do that. Let's talk hey, I was about drinking that shit last weekend. Is it man. good? Yeah, let's transition oh, yeah. into that. Let's transition into that. As far as Maynard goes, in a perfect circle, Wallace. We went to that show. That was like 2004. Yeah, What's that was that? that was the second. <laughs> Not the <album>. same. <laughs> Not the same. It's not the same. I but it's still that fact was cool for me because I it's seeing Maynard. I didn't get to see Soundgarden, but I saw Audio Slave. I was I just gonna Chris say Cornell. that's like being a big Soundgarden fan and then seeing Audio. That's exactly. <laughs> but you know, right, right sucks. You know, I had a good time at that. But show. that, was, that a, was at the U. It was a great show, and that album's really great. It's all it's really gloomy and. There you go. I don't. I don't. And I don't. It's all drugged out. It's all about drugs. Yeah, I'm not know? gonna. I'm not gonna bag on a perfect circle, but. Yeah, you know? I like their first album. The That's the thing. Like I remember when I was younger, everybody it's loved different. Tool, and they put him on a pedestal. Yeah, and I was kind of cool with it. Pedestal. But when Maynard finally came on Passenger, I was like, "All right, I'm I'm on that board." Was the shit. Dude. And then Lateralis came out, and I was like, "Oh, I'm totally on board." And it's still their best yeah, album. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I love Tool. Don't get me wrong. Like Undertow's the shit. Opiate's probably my second favorite. I mean, Yikes. I know that's only an, an EP, but. When I was younger, I hated that pedestal that they were on because everybody was like so into Tool and like yeah. they're the best ever. And it's like, eh. No. I had to get into them a little bit like a, through a different avenue. And that was a perfect circle. But the new A Perfect Circle sucks. I, I don't have anything really about it. Yeah. I've, heard, I've heard a couple I've songs. I've listened to one. I don't care. I'm not, I'm not a what fan. What about that new uh, We Don't Keep Count, uh, Dolphins and Lake George? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you tell us. You tell there. us. Just putting it out there. Remember that. That's the new album. Come- joke? Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there's dolphins in lake george <laughs> there's dolphins in lake george bro yeah. song about it like to hear here it go that's how we go but uh yeah man so lateralis it's dope it's a yeah, masterpiece um, some some really really good times how about some background on it nick i mean i know what i know i know, know i know i know you got a little i know you got the scoop so what you what you got uh, it was produced by david bottrell who has done like a bunch of i mean i guess it depends on what you're into but he did some king crimson records who are huge like tool influences he did later smashing pumpkin stuff silver chair stuff what silver chair i don't know you don't like silver chair is that what we're going no, to no, <laughs> no i don't know i actually I have them know. on my ipod what uh Buggo. It was. We're talking like 2012, 2013 Silver Chair, oh, not the good not stuff. Not like Frog oh. Stomp or nothing. No, 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 no. I even like Neon Ballroom somewhat. But uh, he Hate me. he produced Coheed and Cambria's Apollo, Good Apollo, Volume One. Pokey, which is probably like it's got to be in my top five favorite albums, albums of all time. Wow, that's a bold. And uh, we're talking about the same guy, and he did Circus Survives, Blue Sky Noise, which is another huge album for me. But was this his first big album? No, he did. No? He produced Anima and uh, Saliva. They're oh. kind of like half Salival. live yeah. cover. Yeah. Weird. Let's talk about that. Yeah. That's Saliva. I'm glad you brought that up. They David, David Bottrell did that too. Best cover song. One of the best. No covers. quarter. I've, no quarter. Exactly. Oh, I've ever heard totally by any agree. band. Yeah. I totally agree. Like yep. they, it's it's the same, but they made it their own at the same time. Like it's really the only track on Saliva that I like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> the rest the, of it's kind of like weird, wishy washy garbage. There but. we go. Don't go. Don't wasn't, <laughs> wasn't there a lot of uh, live stuff on there? Yeah. Mostly live. It was, stuff. Didn't yeah. they do uh, Diary? Maynard's Dick was on there too. Yes. Didn't they do Diary of a Madman? But like through no, like, that a was Cure a perfect song? circle. That oh, was a okay. perfect watch circle. Watch it. Watch your mouth. Going back okay. to that, the Napster that was that days, weird, dude. Yeah, that us. was that weird uh, Perfect Circle cover cover album. That that they they did like John Lennon songs and stuff. Yeah, but this was back in the day. Like Wallace sure. said, it was early Napster stuff. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We used Diary of a Madman. They did that. They did... Uh, but it was... A, they played the... They played Cure. They played the Cure, but then he did Diary of a Madman by... Yeah. Was it Ozzy or who... I don't know. I don't remember. I don't, I don't know either. But speak, speaking you know. of Napster, this is why they this is why they came up with that fake name. What that we were talking about earlier, or what is it like? Systematica. Oh yeah, some bullshit. Enchilada. That was that was Tool just trolling everybody. Like the day they finished recording, uh, they released a fa- like a fake track listing and a fake album yeah. name just to get people like searching for it on we Napster, did. and they found shit. Like people went on Napster and found like a bunch of bogus. I mean, I don't know what these songs were, but dude, they I remember, Tool songs. yeah, hearing downloading stuff and thinking it was Tool, but it was a, uh, it was a band I think you liked. Uh, mm. You know what I'm talking about? It was Chevelle's Chevelle. first album. Yeah, oh. and I was like, holy shit! There was one song that really made me like, man, that could fucking be Maynard. This is back in the day where you don't know you I've, were still I've, using dial yeah, up and yeah. shit. You know, yeah, you didn't know. I've always said that FML. Chevelle should be called "We Want to Be Tool." Yeah, mixed with oh, a little yeah, flavor. That's why I don't like them. I like I Chevelle. Like, you know, I like Chevelle. <laughs> no, I, to be I honest. Like, I like be your own, you know. Be your own thing, but uh, 
Yeah, I mean, any that that was the producer. Or anything else? Yeah, I don't know. I know that they recorded a lot of uh, we you have like mantra on there, which is Maynard squeezing his cat in slow motion. Track four. Where's you know what Peter I'm talking about? That? It's just like Ooh. that's his cat. He's squeezing his cat. And they slowed it down. I never knew that. Uh, track two, Eon Blue Apocalypse. That just that guitar track that Adam Jones wrote about his. He had a dog <laughs> named Eon Blue Jones. that died of cancer, and he wrote that song. They wrote a lot of those like little one or two minute musical weird noise segues. And uh, the but, record label gave them eighty minutes, and that record times in at like seventy nine minutes and fifty eight seconds. Exactly. It, they had two seconds to spare, so they cut like four or five tracks from that record of just weird shit going on in the background you i know? never knew that because out of all tools albums you know they they kind of get disconnected and they make a lot of noise and artsy fartsy stuff nick you said you didn't agree with that earlier but this one was the best package it's yeah. the most music for your money i'll agree yes. with that well, yeah. yes because i mean you could listen to a lot of these songs and it's just like the first i don't know it goes it's noodling dude i'm a big zappa fan it's the same way dude you know these dudes are just getting into their music man and if you can't accept that and take that ride then you know, hey, more power to you, but it ain't for you. No, yeah, I'm with you. It's uh, you know, it's all about... it is artsy fartsy, but it, dude, it, I could sit there and appreciate. I'm just the saying shit the last three that. tracks on the on this album. Oh, like, well, totally. Yeah, well, but okay. Tool as a but band. ten thousand days and even Enema a little bit. There's a little. There's... Are you guys worried about what the new Tool? Album I don't. Is can we talk? Like? Can we get to? Can we get to that later now? Because I got to yeah. talk on your point here. Yeah, that yeah. last track. Yeah. Every every Tool album has a Danny Carey song that he does kind of by himself. He samples weird shit and he kind of puts the track together himself. And that's that last song with the uh, the coast to coast the 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 samples from that that dude talking about like Area Fifty One. Yeah, my shit. grandma loves him. Art Bell. Yeah, the, from Art Bell. Bell's Coast to Coast. Yeah, shout, out. That's, uh, shout out to Grandma Riley. She yeah. loves Art Bell. That's Love the you, Danny Carey track on that record, and that's the really? last track on that record. Yeah. Oh, that's what that. But is. he does it on every one. So if every time, you know, if 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 you're not really that into Tool and you're listening to a Tool album, and there's that one song where you're just like, it, "What is this noise?" It's Danny Carey doing whatever whatever he wants. You know, they they give him that one uh, opportunity to do weird shit. Songwriting though on this, like it's a great written like album musically. It's rock and roll, man. It's rock and roll. Yeah, it I is. mean, it, I listened to it today the first time in a long time because with Tool, they're not on any streaming thing. Period. No, right? You can't like they're, get they're, their they're music they're, anywhere. No. It's about to change. Yeah, they're they're not on you. I mean, they're on YouTube, but they're not on Spotify. They're trying to make that. a statement. You know? You're right. Or now they're old. And, now they're old and soft. No, they're trying to make a statement, and now they're old and soft. And they, Adam Jones has already been like, you know, this new album, you, you can buy it on iTunes. When it finally comes out, we're over it. We said what we needed to say, and now we just now it is about the money. I really don't well, want they, it on iTunes. Yeah, I, mean, I don't care. No? no, I want any nah. music to be available anyway. As long as there's some, I don't care if my shit's on iTunes. If I get a couple bucks off a of purchase. That's great because that's just another way that my music is getting out. My biggest beef is that I can't that. play Tool at the bar because it's not Ex on the jukebox. Exactly. Because it's not, that's the only reason I care about yeah. it. Yeah, but I like Tool being the only artist like or record. I, I mean, that I'm I with you. To put sure. In the CD sure. player or. Yeah. But do you like Sick Kanye West because that's what that douchebag does? Oh man, that no, doo doo brown. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> just give me shit. <laughs> that doo doo brown. But it but it puts it into perspective, like. I think they have a pretentious thing. And here's the thing. I love Tool, but here's another thing where they're, they take their self, themselves a little bit too seriously. They're touring as a band this 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 spring and this summer, but as Tool, showing people just the band, but how yeah. to play no as Maynard. Tool. Hey, yeah, uh, yeah. I was going to say that. What they're in that? Chicago tonight. We're, Are they? We're yeah, talking about like this the night. Bucks. Yeah. It See, was that's a lot bullshit. Of it. We're talking about it the is night it before the yeah. band. Yeah, it is. I don't know. I, I don't would think it is. Because if they're doing they played like a... A fake tool. I mean, I mean, we it's a real think, cool dude, song, listen. but some new tool. Oh, song. sure, sure, sure. And it was like this is a VIP event, yeah, right? Meet and greet. We'll, well show you I how mean, to play tool songs. Yeah, they <laughs> do that because people. I mean, dude, they're in, they since we were kids, they've been in all the drum, bass player, guitar magazines. If they're they can get notch, paid, yeah, yeah, they're top notch musicians, and they're basically giving you a uh, what would you call that? A uh, it's just a it. totally exclusive one on one like, experience, man. Well, yeah, experience presentation or whatever. Like Dweezil Zappa does a lot of shit like that. Like workshops is what yeah, I'm trying okay, to say, sure, which is really cool because you can pick their fucking brains. You Listen, know? I they need money. To go. I yeah. wanted to be I, there. I, I totally disagree. Instead, we're doing. I this. think it's pretentious. I, I, oh, I, I think that though no, too. I, do. <laughs> I cool totally think that. To, no, they're they're, they're I, I agree with you, man. They, you know what I'm saying? Like, how about this? As a Tool fan, like we all are in this room, put out an album and don't take 15 years to do it. Uh, put it out. Don't. Well, there was okay. all kinds of supposed legalities. 
Oh, yeah, well, just like when Lateralis came out and said is. with their record label, there was uh, a bunch of shit going yeah. on with a volcano. Volcano, or, yeah. yeah, that was their last one with volcano. Yeah, because of that. Just because, like, like with sports, you know, what have you sports. done? Sports. What, what have you done for me lately? And I Look, do that yeah, a lot with my sorry, musical Chicago. artists that I like. Tool hasn't done shit for this me. Is, lately. Wait a minute. This is what no. I think. Okay. I th- this is what I think. I think it's a little bit pretentious, but I think that every Tool fan and everyone agrees with you. And this is their way of being like, look, I mean, maybe five hundred dollars is a lot of money, but this is their way of saying, okay, we want to give you something. They understand that it takes them too fucking long to make a record, and they understand that their creative process. And if maybe if you think that's pretentious, that's one thing, but it takes them a long time to make a record, and they're finally saying, here's something in the meantime to hold you over, because everyone's mad like you are that there's no new tool record. That's a good point. And here's the thing. Maynard came on Joe Rogan or Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. <laughs> he came Joe, on him. I thought it was, came on him. <laughs> I was, thought it was Joe Riley. Uh, I, this I, guy's I, got Riley's the scoop. Podcast. He came on Joe, Joe Rogan. I thought Maynard podcast. was going to be here tonight. Yeah, right. Oh. But remember, he was placing the blame on them. Like, they take forever. You really know what's was. funny is that someone filmed some something last night from something they were doing. And he did like uh, he did a rant. He he was like. So here's the question. Did. Is Maynard saying that because he's the one that doesn't have his shit together? Because it sounds like what you just mentioned, Tool, he's got the venues, don't. Tool <laughs> is going out to the fans and they're and they're performing and showing them how to play the songs or whatever they're whatever they're doing. This is what I think. But Maynard isn't there, so is it Maynard's no, fault or no. is it the band's Maynard's fault? Maynard's dick. I think it takes. I th- I think it takes. Maynard's dick. The, uh, I think it takes the other guys ten years to make a record, and I think Maynard comes in at the end. And he just does what he does, and it's that's and it's, what I heard. And it's great. He did some and interviews basically saying that recently. He's like, I had vocals all the way done, and these guys didn't like the music, <clears throat> so I had to rewrite all the vocals. And I think that was that's on what the Rogan. His, yeah, yeah, that's what he said on Rogan. I think that's what his rant was about. Was Joe like, Rogan. I, you know, he said, I'm, I want to take off this riot gear. Like, people <laughs> yeah. are coming at me. He was, ta- he, I think the thing started. He was like, I don't like bananas or tomatoes because everyone's throwing them at me, and I want to take off this riot gear because I'm sick of people blaming me for this. Because he does have a lot going on. Well, if the band has enough time to one. show people how to play sober, they should really uh, focus <laughs> yes. on putting out an album. Listen to a song called "Sober" from a guy who owns a vineyard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being, I'm being harsh. I love Tool, but yeah. let, let's put out some content. We could joke sure. on them, though. It's, you know, yeah. they're joking on us for <laughs> no, I twelve gr- years. That's the thing, too. But man. I'm not going to be a sucker and buy a five hundred dollar ticket Love to, them, to watch them. that. That's fair. That's all I'm saying. That's fair. That's all I'm saying. But, but that that shit was sold out. So there's it plenty was, of people. Right? <laughs> there's plenty, there's people. plenty of people. They're like always going to sell out, though. They're at like the status where do if Pink Floyd announced tomorrow they're going to play. Anywhere, yeah, right. It's sold We're out. We're gonna play with our dicks on stage. Yeah. It costs five hundred bucks. Gonna pull, you would be there. People's... Transition into that. That's a really good point. Transition to the fact, like they are a classic rock group. And I used to talk they to my dad now. a lot about Tool. And my dad and I, like, we saw him before Did we live. Just admit this. And Hold come on one to second. This? Hold on. Isn't one it second. twenty yeah, years? Like twenty years is but, a, but they makes are it a classic. They right. are like the new uh, Pink Floyd. Yeah, the newer our generation's Pink yeah, Floyd. Exactly. Right? I mean. You know, they, they're it sucks to admit farcy. that, though, because it makes you feel old, dude. It's yeah, like, well, damn. I mean, it's Why? 17 years old tomorrow. Kind of yeah. their, third, like, their third studio album. I always thought album. of them as, like, a more heavy metal Pink Floyd. Yeah, metal yeah, Pink yeah, Floyd. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Well, especially this album. To me, this Lateralis was the kind of shift. You know, I think we talked about it before. You were telling me how much oh, yeah. you love Opiate and Undertow, and I'm like, yeah, you're a, you're a punk rock guy. You're a metal guy. That's why you like those records. Lateralis, I mean, a little bit on Anima. That's when Justin Chancellor came into the band and stuff started to change a little bit. I really bit. liked Anima. No, I, I love that record, too. But Lateralis was the shift of like, okay, now we're... And, and, it, and now you're saying like, well, those songs are fucking solid. Like, maybe even more solid than those, like, grungy, weird... Solid logs. Yeah. And like you guys were saying, like, the, the last track is Danny Carey's track. With Third Eye, you kind of got a taste of Lateralis, sure. I thought. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they were definitely on that road, and then they they fucking nailed it. And then they 10,000 Days got a little too far in that direction, and we'll see someone what happens. Someone said it, it sounded like Godsmack back in the day. So no. I remember someone... When I mean, I love that record, out, but I mean, if there's a... Chugging, t- didn't, didn't, well, I'm not going to agree didn't, with it. It sounded like God. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, but there's if there's a transition there, like, you know, some of the so, some of the Inema stuff is like they were moving in a direction. Lateralis was, I don't want to say the peak because 10,000 Days is a great record, but Lateralis is like, they found their footing. This is what they're doing as a band. And then they kind of kept going that way for 10,000 Days and it got a little bit further away from who they were. You know, if you're a Tool fan, you love it all. But people who love, who love Opiate, 
do not love 10,000 Days. It's a different band, you know, and Lateralis was in that sweet spot in the middle kind of when they were, you know, it's their best album it because there's less there's less noise. There's less. It's it's a great album because there's a ton of, I don't know, songs that just make sense and just less, you know, actual dial songs. tones. Yeah, actual just songs. actual Lots written things songs. things get high, too. What's that? Nothing. <laughs> But yeah, man, that's good shit. Good shit. Um, as far as I don't know, the record sales wasn't it? Like, they went double platinum in the U.S. and then Justin was saying something about them. Australia was platinum, right? Yeah, well, yeah some they were like silver. Europe, they were like platinum. I know it was double platinum they were like in the U.S. Probably gold, gold now. Little goldish. Little it's, yeah, goldish. it's a dope selling album. I can't pull it up right now. I'm <laughs> inebriated, bro. That's okay. I know. I know they definitely went uh, double out. Double platinum in the u.s like right away well let's go let's go through the track list sure let's go to the track we're the grudge like a crown mother we're going through the grudge what y'all feel about the grudge it's great i love it yeah great opening track yes agreed do it no do the do the vocals it's not gonna happen i should have brought you up can i not your jaw eon blue that's instrumental it was cool yeah yeah that's uh that's just adam jones's little uh dr jones little little thing to his dead dog little song for that's his dead that's dog. for his dead dog yeah that song used to make me dizzy what were you up to back then in 2001 yeah, right. for to make you dizzy? what were you on <laughs> what were you on in 2001 why don't you have a seat let's just say <laughs> i liked feeling dizzy back then though. did you look like michael with your legs crossed like that <laughs> oh. sophisticated woman. my legs are crossed yeah. zing. zing don't cross uh, the patient legs. the patient is yeah. my bible the patient is your Bible house, so. Well, you know, what's the courteous? What's the courteous? What's the chorus? Uh, this tedious path, you know. This money. <laughs> he's just, he's, he's talking about, you know, this, this is a lot of fucking hard work and it sucks, but, uh, you know, at the end of the road, cool shit is happening if you power through and keep doing I, I almost feel like this whole record is about tool breaking up. I mean, if we're going to talk about the lyrical, lyrical content, content, yeah, the whole. Yeah, we could go into that. I mean, the whole, every song is just progressively like Maynard saying, yeah, I guess it's worth it. I know the pieces fit. This tedious path I've chosen. You know what I mean? Every- I always like to make a little play. I love Tool, but I like to make a little <laughs> what? A little spoof on the lyrics to that. I know my penis fits. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, not bad. That's yeah. good. Thanks, Michael. Uh, <laughs> Maggle. We'll say thanks, Michael's in my just Schism. Grammy. Schism. Won a Grammy. For- I don't you Grammy? know. That's a song when it comes on the radio. I don't mind listening to it. You know, I never <laughs> like we were talking about good because we're talking one. about that's how one that doesn't get old. Tool. Like a single, though, you know, you get. I don't care what bands you love, you get sick of singles, and I never got sick of Schism. It's a great you song. Know? That's funny you said that because I skipped it today when I listened did to the you? album. Oh, I did I skipped it. Oh man, that was the first song I really skipped remember <laughs> on the radio. Yeah, yeah no, I used to I used to listen to Q101 all day long to hear oh, that man. song yeah, five right. or six times I you know to it, the day it was supposed to premiere i listened to q101 all day to trying hear to hear that, that shit. song yeah. yeah it was a good i mean i wish we still had that those you know those radio stations with some rock and roll look at Stratton, he's looking at me we might get that in the future right Stratton? we're gonna have our own rock and roll radio station we're starting to fund can you hear me <laughs> yeah you we're guys need to fund. fund us gonna fund everybody fund listening. us but uh yeah schism <laughs> i skipped it today i did I put this I'm album sorry. on, you know, doing a little exercise. And I had to, I had to skip it. I've heard it a million times. Yeah. Do you guys know about the like rearranged way to listen to this album, uh-uh. like backwards? No, it's well, it's not backwards. I mean, I guess we're skipping ones. ahead in track listing. But Lateralis was written. They use the Fibonacci sequence to like that's how the lyrics are laid out in the guitar. You know, they're very into like that geometry and that math way of like creating the spiral with the way they play or whatever. So some like rabid crazy Tool fans ordered the record that way and. It's a thing like and it's it sounds it actually sounds better. They came up with this theory about how they released the album one way, but they wanted you to go back and do the math to figure out the real way to listen to the album. And it was going to change your experience and it was going to explain certain things. And I think that's a bunch of crazy tool fan bullshit. I don't think that tool did that. But if you listen to it in a certain way, look it up. It sounds better, like the way that the tracks lead into one another and like kind of sorry, I totally derailed this. No, 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 no. no. It makes so like. The way it came out. That's how I've been listening to it for the past two days. Is this out of, I think they they call it like the holy gift or something. It's some ridiculous super fan crazy. Never heard of it. Nonsense. But it really, it's a really fun way to listen to the record. They should have put it it out that way. And it makes Schism. 
Well, no, because that was not their intention. It was okay. just some crazy shit somebody told the world about, and they're all like, oh, yeah, Tool's weird. They could have done that. But, it, yeah, it's, it sounds cool, man. And and sk- and I'm getting to that because the way that Schism is sandwiched in between other songs, I think Tix and Leeches comes after it and uh, Parabola comes before it, and the way that those songs lead into each other is kind of beautiful. That's a good blended It's album. Pimp Tight. It is Pimp Tight. It's, it's a great, just a great blended album. Yeah. How do you say that? Parano- How do you say it? Parable and Parable. Parabola. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Ticks and Leeches. That's Ticks my track. Yeah. yeah. That's, That's an angry track. song. It is a great track. Yeah, yeah. You angry. guys are mad. That's why. You guys are yeah. feel like you guys We're are fucking so angry orchard angry guys. About everything. I'm never angry. angry orchard. They're literally drinking We're dilly angry dilly right, right now. now. We're drinking Those that Budweiser are hand bud like. Are they? Are yeah. they your favorite album? Yeah. 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 Which ones? Parable. Oh, same. 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 The Ticks and Leeches. And Lateral. I like Lateralis because of that drum beat. Yeah. Let's get into that. That drum beat. And how it just builds up right right off the bat. It's so good. Wallace, could you give us a little little taste of how that sounds? No, I can't. All right, thanks. <laughs> oh, wow. But, uh, yeah, just, then we get into the part of the album that you hate. I know. It's right after that, isn't it? Gets it? Farty. No, disposition's okay. It's reflection, triad, and I don't even know how you say the last one. Fia- Sexual circle. Fia- it's, uh, it's some weird occultian language for the voice of God, and that's the Danny Carey track where he uses the coast-to-coast stuff to whatever. That song's called The Voice of God. That's what I call it, because I don't know how to speak that language either. <laughs> <laughs> your ear just smell. <laughs> it's the voice of God. You've done God. wrong. God. <laughs> Danny Carey, you can't play God with me. But yeah. Lateralis, man. That's a great album. I can't believe it's 17 years old. That's crazy. It can smoke next year. Yeah. Really? Can it go to the Ayos. military? Or what? What? We're getting old. It could be gay in the military. <laughs> could be gay in the military. <laughs> so happy birthday to Lateralis. Uh, thanks, guys, for coming. Yeah, that's it. We're done. We're done. We're done. Wow. We're done. Killing it. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Tool. Happy birthday, Tool. Happy birthday, tool. I love you. Long time. <laughs> Adios. I'm musically meditated. That's right. I'm musically meditated. That's right. I'm musically meditated. for my ass over there. <laughs> <laughs>